Hello everyone. Um, I'm Asha Mustafa coming from Tanzania or East Africa. I'm representing Humanitarian Open Street Map team and Open Map Development Tanzania as a local NGO in my country. Um, here today I'm going to present to you about uh, taking community mapping to the next level. Uh, this was a project done under its uh, Data Z2 project, which was uh, funded by Data Collaborative for Local Impact uh, in collaboration with PEPFA and Millennium Challenge Corporation. It was a one year project, and then uh, HOT were the one who executed the project in Tanzania. Uh, we did the project in two regions in Tanzania. One is Dar es Salaam, and then the other one is on the uh, southwest of uh, Tanzania, which is called Mbea. So, um, so um, in doing this project, the main focus was uh, to find out the accessibility of the healthcare facilities, especially to women and children, as well as um, how do youth access sexual reproductive health. But when we were doing this project, uh, we came to uh, discover uh, some boundaries which were existing in the country, but no one has ever mapped them before. They were existing, but no one has ever mapped them. So before we reach to that, uh, level of the discovery, uh, I would like you to take, uh, to introduce you our administrative boundaries in our country. So it starts uh, from the uh, from the national level, as this is our country, and then goes to the region, uh, as these are uh, colors categorized, these are the regions in different colors. But within these regions, there are munis municipal and districts. And uh, from the districts, we have wards and subwards. So within Within a, within a district, there is be ward and subward, of which in ward and subward there is a population around from 1,000 to 5,000 people. So, um, as I said, the main focus of the project was accessibility to healthcare facilities. But during that project, we uncovered something called Shina uh, boundaries, which are ruled by Tencent leaders. There are administrative boundaries in the country, but no one has ever mapped them before. So I'll tell you, how did we need, or do we need this general admin, admin, admin boundaries? First of all is rapid urbanization. As I said, we did this activity in Dar es Salaam, which is the one among the cities which are developing fast in, uh, uh, in Africa. Right now, there's a population of 4.6 million. And as year going, the population will be doubled. So there was a need to identify uh, uh, where people, uh, where uh, the people who need service, where are they in, in the smallest area. As you have seen, this, uh, this category it means that if they would use that, it's difficult to access or to find the people in need within a short period of time. As well as security, for example, when someone is arrested in our country, you have to say where are you exactly coming from within a very smallest unit. So it's easy to track in case of uh, any issue happen, as well as locating victims during uh, emergence. For example, we are doing different projects in flooding, as well as uh, access of uh, facilities as well as we're, find, we're trying to find out how can we trace patients when it comes to the un outbreak, for example, Corella, which is one of the diseases which happens a lot in our country every time when it's the flooding, especially in Dar es Salaam. As well as for administration purposes, we're doing sensor in our country for uh, every after 10 years. We need something called enumeration areas, which we need to use that to do the sensor. So this uh, granular boundary would be one of the potential uses for this purpose, as well as for other uses. So in doing all these activities, we, uh, we do something called uh, community mapping. Every activity we do in our country, or every data collection we do in our country, we work with community. We involve the community who are actually facing the problem that it's easy for them to say uh, or to ask their fellow communities or for what is happening. So it assures us with the quality of the data we correct, uh, as well as uh, the
the ownership of the data that we will be sharing back. So we have our motto, which is uh, local people, open tools, and local devices. So we use community to do our data collections. We use open tools software, such as QGIS, and open data kit, as well as open map kit to do our data collections. We also use uh, local devices. We use the devices or smartphones which community own them in their daily life to do any other communication. So we want to show them the devices that they own can also be used to, for life changing. So this is one of the example we do our meetings. Like here we have a meeting with local leaders telling them the importance of the project and why are we we wanted to do the accessibility of healthcare project. And then here, one of the supervisors is training the community using her own devices to do the data collection. What we do, we install the, uh, we install the application on their phone and then we train them which uh, the application is in our local language, which is Swahili language. The same here, we do the training. And after we do the training, and this like is a platform uh, how the, uh, the ODK looks like. So what we did uh, when we were doing this data collection, we were facing a challenge of community not trusting the people we sent to do data collection. So what we did, we started to include community uh, local leaders who are responsible for 50 to, I mean 30 to 50 houses. So every community in our country have to know this leader and they have the boundaries which exist, but no one has ever mapped them before. So we use these leaders to put them in our form so that when we do data collection, it's easy to, uh, to tag their names once the community have said. For example, if someone comes to my home to ask me the questions, I would also say the name of my local leader. Like for example here, uh, community uh, are doing data collections and as you can see, they're also accompanied for the safety and also quality assurance of the data. We are also including the local leaders themselves to move around the area with the mapper to do the data collection. So after we have done the project, uh, we did all the data collection, which was concerning about accessibility to healthcare facilities. But when we came to the office, we start uh, cleaning the data and do, uh, do the uh, categorization and make the final output. This is what we have di we discovered. Uh, this is how our data looked like in the Kobo toolbox after we have collected. This is one of the word in Dar es Salaam. And then once we categorize them in basing the name of the local leader, we, we find out these patterns uh, like shows the group of people who have shown that their local leader is someone. Everyone said this is my local leader. So what we did, uh, we used QGIS to clean up and also try to, uh, to trace out these boundaries depending on the shape. And then we got this, uh, we got this map that shows the administrative boundaries. So as you know, uh, in our country, the last level was word. So we have something else called uh, Shina boundary, which is the response uh, where in this one, there's 30 to 50 houses and they have a local leader who they erect themselves. So this is, uh, it's like a final output, but we didn't end there. What we did, we had to go back and verify what we have collected. So we went back to the local leaders uh, in meetings. We had to verify what we have collected. So as you can see, leaders from different world verifying the map that we have produced before we came up the final output to show to the public that these are the boundaries that we have discovered and no one has ever mapped them before. But after we have done that, we say, how can we use this map? Is where we had comes to, uh, when it comes to healthcare facilities, how can we use it? So we came across uh, one doctor, one of our, in, when we do our workshop, there was one doctor from one big hospital called Dr. Mahiza, who was interested on uh, tracking children who are suffering from malnutrition because most of them were brought at the hospital late. So it was hard for, them, uh, for him to cure the kids. So he was trying to find out how can they trust uh, these children and also help them uh, within their communities. So on the presentation, he was very interested and like sent a request on how can we help them. So this is one of the example how we can use uh, Shina map. Uh, this was the case. Uh, we can 
find it in YouTube. Uh, it was cholera outbreak, which was discovered by John Snow in 1844 in London. Whereby he was trying to find uh, where the patients who are suffering from cholera, where are they coming from. So as you can see, uh, here is where the cases started. But as time goes on, the cases were all look like they're coming from the same place. And the sources when he was asking the patients was because they were using the same water pipe. So, okay. so after they have, they changed or they closed the water pipe, people were cured. So after knowing, uh, uh, tracing the patient's origin was one of the sources that helped him to cure the people from that community. So we had to do the same to try to use it, using this product to try to track patients in one of the big hospitals in Dar es Salaam called Amana Hospital. This hospital has electronic registration system. So what we did is we did some data collection for, uh, for the most of the areas where the patient who goes to this hospital goes to. We did some mapping and then what we did, uh, we do some, we integrate the map to their system as a dashboard where they can see all the diagnosis when it comes to uh, recording patients. Because every time when they uh, record, every time when a person comes to the hospital, they have to say their location, where they're coming from. But it was not important for them to record exactly where are they coming from. So what we did, this was initially the system. Uh, here in region uh, district, what there was no, they had to type. So what we did, we modified the system and then put categorization that they would select, the region, uh, uh, district, ward, and also the name of the local leader. So we modify and then we trained them how to do the data collection using their own system, as well as the importance of uh, tracking patients' original, tracking the patient addresses every time the patient comes to the hospital. So, and this is one of the example how the dashboard will look like. So there will be, this is a map of the area and these are the diseases which have been recorded. For example, this is malaria. It shows the cases where the malaria people came from the most. But here it shows that this is the area where most of the people of malaria came from, but it's not enough to show where you should start. Using Shina mapping, this is how we narrow it down. Now it shows them that this is where you should start first before you go around the whole area of the city to, to cure comes to malaria. And this we did an example for the cholera outbreak which happened on May. We also tried to track the patients and also we all found out one of the, uh, most of the patients come from the ward called uh, Vingunguti and it was, uh, we were able to, they were able to find a solution quick and help the community. But also, this is an electronic system. There are some places which are remote and they don't have electronic. So we produce maps like this and the doctor would use pins to pin out uh, where the, uh, the patients were coming from, like this one. This is Dr. Mahiza from Amana Hospital. He's training a doctor from a Lulu area in Tanzania how to use PIN to, to do the same thing as they're doing in electronic system. The aim is to track patients and save life. But all this data, what we had to do, again, is to, uh, as I said, about the accessibility of healthcare facilities, it was not only Shina. We did uh, some accessibility also, for example, this is shows how women, uh, how many time, how long do they spend in road to access healthcare facilities. For example, here it shows the, uh, it shows, uh, here it shows uh, how long, for example, quickly I can say the red dot shows women are spending a uh, long time to access healthcare facilities, which uh, in other hand, they could help the government or decision maker to make a quick decision how to help women in this area. And then after this, we share, we train our community. Uh, we train stakeholders from different organizations such as JTABO and other organizations how to, to use this data because we wanted to them to... Yeah. Okay. Um, so we wanted them to 
what we wanted them to do is to use MAP as one of the tools to make decision on provision of health care facilities. So this is one of the training we did and share back the maps that we did. But also local leaders who make decisions in the community, we had to train them and share them back all the maps we collected. And this is the example of the maps. This is in Bear. We did uh, the trainings with the local leaders as well as some of the organizations to do uh, to use maps to uh, to track patients and uh, uh, to trace patients origins for example this is uh, after we have shared the maps this was uh, like a local map they were using like they draw it and then we uh, give them the map that they can uh, replace with the map they had before so um, what I can say in conclusion is that this China map discovery that we have done, it's something that can be used to save human, especially uh, in my country. So it needs more efforts, it needs uh, to be updated, it needs to, to reach out to more people because it was a project that was done only in two regions and it, it's already still on trial, it was one year project. But also this China mapping, uh, it's something that Need more needs to be done. Like we need to map more shinas. We need to, to train more registry people, to learn nurses, because uh, every day people are being employed. They need the knowledge and they need to know uh, what are the importance because initially they did. No, all this need efforts, all this need fundings. So, but also, uh, I can say, uh, tracking patients' origin or what we have discovered so far in my country, uh, in Tanzania, is one of the tools that can be used in life saving, especially for women and children. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Ah, uh, you bet. <coughs> Mic check. Working? Okay, cool. Um, you had mentioned that the mappers use their own devices. Yes. Um, did you also pro provide uh, data? Like, did you provide them with credit to use the device? Yes, we yeah. do provide them credit because they would need internet to download the forms in the server as well as to send them back. Okay. So we provide them with the internet. More questions? Uh, you were showing the, thank you for the presentation first, it was great. Um, you were showing the portal with some of the maps. Uh, do you also, I, I haven't had a time to check it, do you also do these core plot maps like a normalized based on population or uh, an area? Uh, I saw it was a case per area. Maybe it makes, I guess, generally often makes sense to Relative, make it relative to population. Yes, for example, uh, for example, this is one of the map that was based by population. So we created a population map based on the, that smallest unit in the community. So, for example, this was, was exa a map for access uh, hotspot mapping. So we did this mapping, identify the population, so that this organization could use this map to provide the service such as mobile clinic. They would know where they need to go uh, most of the times because of the population in the area. So this was one among the examples. But also we have tried to share it with the government so they would see how they can categorize the population based in this smallest unit because they haven't done it before. The only uh, level was from the subword. So like was sh we wanted to show them you can categorize this at this level and then it's easy even to do the priority in, uh, in uh, allocating services in the community or in other needs in the community regarding the population. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the nice presentation. I'm just curious from your last um, answer when you were answering the last uh, question, um, what was the the reply to the government when you were presenting about the sh this methodology okay Thanks. um the reply from the government uh first of all when we say uh, this is the open soft uh, soft uh, tools that you can use there was a uh, a bit of like they couldn't agree but uh as you know always I'm talking by experience from my country. Once you find someone who is in need of uh, a help of certain uh, activity, it's easy to convince the rest of the people from the government of the officer to do the same. So initially we have, they, 
they need for they need sh this shina mapping for as enumeration areas to do sensor in our country so we wanted to show them rather than uh, going and do enumeration area every after 10 years you can have these boundaries which exist in the country every uh, years and then they're not changing you can use the same and then do the as enumeration area for your sensor every time you want to do the sensor so it's still uh, uh, going on investigation and what we did we trained them and we went with them in the field using ODK and OMK to trace some of the shinas that can use as enumeration areas so right now they're analyzing them and see how can they fit with the other uh, tools that they're using before like using open softwares to do those so yeah so it's in good position right we have time for one or two more questions i have one myself i'm really curious about thank you for the presentation by the way it's very impressive and this but, but from what i understand the um the shina the, the local um 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 how do you say the, the local um uh leaders um are identified by households. There's a certain amount of households. These households are uh, logically clustered, but I can imagine sometimes these borders kind of overlap. You have one household that identifies one leader and another one which might be even a little bit closer by that identifies another leader. Okay, uh, so as I said, these boundaries, they exist. That issue happens sometimes. You know, I might not, uh, we are not maybe in good terms with my leader, and then I prefer to go to another leader because everything you need to do in our country, you have to go to this readers first. For example, I want to need to open a bank account. I even when I wanted a visa to come here, I have to go to my leader to approve that I'm staying in that community so that I can move forward. So these leaders, they have specific area. So no matter if you are, uh, you are, you are working or you are now working with the community leader, once your house, uh, is in within his territory, that means you are belonging to that leader. So even if you won't say uh, when you go to the hospital that this is my leader, but if you say uh, the leader, obviously you say the leader who is nearby. So those cases might happen, but they're not, let's say, the in 100, maybe let's say 10, those cases. So it doesn't have that much effect, but still they happen. Yeah. And was there any... Um, I can imagine if this is the first time the borders are kind of drawn on yeah. paper, did you also see that people were disputing the borders that were being drawn? Um, the, the interesting thing about this border is these borders, they're there. And they're not changing. So the only thing we change is the reader. So maybe they're not interested in your new for five years, they would need someone else. But the borders doesn't change. It's all the same. Because it's very smallest unit that 50 houses, it, that will never change. Yeah, unless maybe in the future, but probably... And everybody knows from their heart. From? From that, like they know in their minds how the border goes. No, so the borders, the leaders are the one who knows the border. Because a lot from the uh, what, uh, subword office, they have like a local map. So before we give them this, they had like a local map drawn of their own borders. So when we gave them this, it was like, life changing to them because they had but it it wasn't like digitized and like put it in a good format yeah, yeah. but they know maybe just also some a piece of advice and question in a way too when you mentioned the enumeration areas yeah. it's very important to keep in mind also that uh, um, there are some criteria for that so it cannot exceed the number of buildings it cannot exceed the number of people yeah for the enumerator so that might change in the future so it's not safe to say that these are there and remain the same enumeration areas might have to be modified or some of these shina would have to be probably divided if the population grows especially in dar es salaam or somewhere but i think it's very important what you're doing the part of digitizing these and getting them available digitized that's very important and that's that's something that you should continue as you say more needs to be done but it's very important to have low level of administrative divisions so good job thank you a very short question uh, i was just wondering are the local leaders uh, employed by or paid by the government or how does that work or is it voluntary work 
So uh, most of them, it's voluntary work. But if community we need uh, service, it's us who give them like uh, something for us to give the service, especially the letters or something. So most of them, it's volunteering work for them. Yes. So like they have other works, but also they do that for. Asha, thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>